Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Drusilla, and to give you a um, slight understanding of opportunities, I'm going to talk about me, about my life. I was born of a Mozambican descent, and I grew up in Zimbabwe, as my father worked there. I grew up in a high density suburb, and as every child, I had dreams of a better life for me, my parents, and my siblings. Beyond, beyond the hopeful dreams every child possesses, I would sink back into the reality of watching my mother's rights being violated frequently by my father. She would endure each and every type of abuse. Sometimes she would be beaten to a pulp, and sometimes we would not be, step, be spread of this. We would have to run away with her together. And this was normal to us because it seems as if every man in the community lived like that. And it was our daily bread. And I thought it was normal. To my father's credit, I had the opportunity to go to primary school. I devoted myself to study and myself, apply myself fully because I dreamt of a better life. Soon, I became one of the best three in class. And in grade seven, I passed with flying colors, being among the six best in our province. When I was in form two, my mother died. 11 months later, my father followed her. Me and my four siblings had to go to Mozambique to live with my only aunt. I did not have the opportunity to go to school in Mozambique because my aunt already lived in a very impoverished environment and we were a burden to her. Tears rolled down my cheeks whenever I saw a uniformed student going to school. I would cry thinking that all my dreams were shattered and I would never be able to realize them without education. My aunt saw me as a cash cow and ticket out of a miserable life. She planned to marry me to a 53-year-old rich man when I was 16. I fought very hard and I won the battle thanks to the opportunity of going to school before my parents' death. Thanks for the little education I had before their death. Through sacrifice, I had the opportunity to work as an English teacher at a certain private school. This helped me a lot to take care of my siblings who lived with my aunt, but I had to provide for them. And this opportunity of being independent gave me a chance to date this guy to whom I became pregnant when I was 18 years old due to lack of opportunity of sex education. Because in my country and in my community, you can't talk of sex life to a girl. It's a taboo. The vicious circle of poverty and violence seemed to follow me. I fell once again in a violent spider of violence. Having lived with this man who was very violent and irresponsible for seven years, I always had to work hard. Thank God for the opportunities I had to have a job each and every time I needed it. I always had it. At Le Musica, my current employer, I had the opportunity to be trained on solution-focused approach, which is centered on the client being the expert for their own life. After three years of this training, I was a different person, and as a solution to my life, I separated. I did separate, and I'm happy with my two daughters out of this union and three remaining siblings whom I'm trying by all means to take care of. The biggest opportunity in my life came this March when I was chosen to be a 2015 Yandley Fellow on the track of civic leadership. And I'm very grateful for it because being trained in leadership, 
I have the opportunity to go back home and help other women and children who are undergoing exactly what I went through. That's giving me the opportunity of helping make change in other people's life. Thank you, Yali, for the opportunity. And I hope this is the stepping stone to more opportunity for myself and more young women and men who think being gendered is not being endangered. Thank you.